Now we know from our last video that light is being absorbed by pigments inside our plants. And we know that these pigments are either called carotenoids or chlorophyll. So over here, I have a general structure of what you would see a carotenoid to be looking like. And this is what a chlorophyll would look like. The chlorophyll head actually is a lot more complicated than this. But just remember that inside these are a bunch of electrons. These are bonds and bonds are connected by electrons. And bonds, as we know from chemistry, connect atoms together in the form of electrons. So inside, in this chlorophyll head, we have a bunch of electrons. We have electrons on this, what we call a chlorophyll, the tail of the chlorophyll, as well as in carotenoids too. So what happens? How do we excite electrons? What does this exciting of electrons mean? Now over here we can see that I drew a sun, and the sun is giving out a bunch of light, not just ultraviolet light and not just infrared light, but more importantly, visible light, the light that we are able to see as humans. So remember that light can also be expressed in a particle form. So this particle is formed in packets called photons. So let's just say that in our, our visible light, we have a bunch of orange photons or orange visible light coming in a particle form as photons, these photons right here, photons. And we have them attack the chlorophyll head. Now, if you, and if you want to visualize this, let's just pretend that this, and if you want to visualize this better, let's just pretend this is a magnifying glass and we're zooming in to the leaf of a plant. Let's just draw the leaf of a plant right over here. Namaste. We have a green piece of broccoli or whatever. And this is just zooming in into the tiny little chloroplast of the leaf. So we have this orange photon coming from the sun, and it's bouncing onto the head of this chlorophyll. And as I already said, the chlorophyll has electrons. The electrons are what keep the atoms inside the chlorophyll together. And when these electrons then get excited, it raises electrons to a high energy state. So let's denote an electron with this blue dot over here. And all the energy from this photon, remember, photons come with a certain wavelength. And wavelength designates energy. And the energy in this photon, measured by the wavelength of it, is going to excite this electron over here. Now, what does it mean to excite this electron over here? Well, when we're talking about exciting electrons, we can see it here in this graph. So we have these photons, and in our example, we use the orange photon. But remember, it can be a photon in any part of the visible light spectrum. And we can have green photons, or we can have orange photons, or red photons. And we know that they come in different wavelengths. And the smaller the wavelength that you have, the more energy you have. So in our example with our orange photon, as this photon hits this right here, and this right here is just our electron. That is our electron. And if you want to go back to the picture over here, it's the same thing. A packet of photons, they're coming in, and they're coming in this wavelength to attack the electrons within the structure of the chlorophyll. And when this happens, our electron becomes excited. And what does this mean? Well, this means that our electron is bumped into a higher energy state. So here we can see the energy state of electrons. And if you can see here, this is a certain amount of energy. And this is more energy. And it keeps going on and on. But notice how the energy states of my electrons, whether it's at the first energy state or the second energy state, they're at very distinct levels of energy. An electron has a very discrete state, and a discrete meaning incremental, meaning that it is not a continuous energy state. And 
An electron cannot be bumped here and be considered energy state, the first energy state, or it cannot be bumped just right here in, and just say that it's part of the second energy state. It must have a discrete amount of energy before it reaches a certain energy state. That means if a pigment, and in our case the chlorophyll, is able to absorb a photon with the right amount of energy, energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation or light energy, is then transferred to this electron. This electron then goes to that specific energy state. Now let us see what is more likely. Would the red photon push our electron towards the second energy state, or the orange photon push us to the second energy state? Now let's remember that red light had around 710 nanometers as a wavelength, and the orange photon has around 600 nanometers. And we know from the last videos that the shorter nanometers that you have for wavelength, the more energy you have. So more than likely, when this orange photon hits the pigment of the chlorophyll, and it gives off the correct amount of energy, the electron is then excited into the second energy state. It has now more energy. It took the energy from this photon, this orange photon coming from the sun, the biggest source of energy, and it is transferred to a more excited state. It's almost as if you're giving an electron a lot of sugar. Now, what about the red photon? Well, more than likely, the red photon will be able to bump into the first energy state and not the farther energy state because it has a higher nanometer wavelength. Now, what about the green photon in our example? Well, we know that the green photon, when it hits chlorophyll, chlorophyll is only strong in absorbing blue or red range of visible light. So when the green photon hits the electron, more than likely it does not gain any energy. And when this happens, it stays in what we call, let's write that over here, the ground state.